Master, O oh my Lord, my Savior and my guide, I wander through this life, no place for me to hide. I am your servant, lost, I seek your mercy, God, and only you can show such mercy, O oh my Sometimes miss my fast and sometimes miss my prayer. I am your creature, Lord. Have mercy on my soul, for only you can show such mercy, O oh my Lord. So weak. 
Broken, frail, defeated and confused And only with your help will I succeed, my Lord Mawla, ya, ya, Mawla, Mawla, ya, ya, Mawla Bar Muhammad wa al Muhammad salawat Allahumma salli ala محمد وآل محمد وعجل رحم الله من عاد الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل مغضي عليهم مغضالين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم كتابه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإن تعدوا نعمة الله لا تؤسها صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى الله سبحانه وتعالى in Surah Ibrahim tells us that uh, if we attempt or we would like to add up to his given blessings, we will not be able to do so. In the line, the continuation of as many as we can, the blessings we discuss, we shall not be able to finish. However, we need to pick up whichever we can and try to know more about them, insha'Allah. Tonight, if we all recall, in the first uh, presentation, when I was trying to introduce the, the verse, it said that there are so many things in the Qur'an mentioned that there are so many things that are given as examples, as blessings. And one of them was faith, was Iman. So this is the first one I am mentioning which cannot be seen. It's a spiritual blessing. And in doing so, and in keeping in line with the days approaching uh, of the Shahada of our first Imam, Imam Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. This quality of faith fits in him so well. And very much in short, with the admission and confession that I will not be able to do justice uh, to portray or to explain this personality. So just touching by it, mentioning Imam Ali, of course, and then in the second bit, I have been reminded uh, that uh, tonight I should uh, recite a little bit or touch a little bit about the Battle of Badr because that was fought uh, on a day like today. So I will go by that as well and then end up again another request, a very important request and a reminder to maybe touch a little bit, probably a minute or two on the coming nights, the Layal al Qadr, but very much in a form of points only because uh, my senior scholars will definitely uh, cover it in, in depth before the Amal and during the days to come, insha'Allah. So, this blessing of faith, of Iman, has been mentioned in the Quran, in the Ahadith, and then the practicalities in the events in the history and in our normal lives should be able to build us up and to tell us what first Iman is and what kind of Iman or how strong we should uh, adhere or should be close to it. I would just take a small paragraph from a very renowned writer, most of you will have read his book and uh, that probably should be sufficient to tell us who Imam was in a nutshell. Because going one by one uh, needs courage also that explaining such a personality in the history of Islam still remains uh, unchallenged. This writer by the name of George Jordak, and you all uh, know him and must have heard, and he's written this book, The Voice of uh, Human Justice, and uh, 
So he, in the preface, you will find this. And it is very interesting because he's put it so well that uh, it gives you a very good outline or a guideline towards what his, actually his message is. So he says, Imam Ali alayhi salam, Allah Allah ala Muhammad ala ala Muhammad although he was born in Arabia, his person, as a person, his person was not meant for Arabia. These sentences are very touchy because if you look into the depth, then it opens up the entire uh, arena of his quality of being born in Arabia, but not being meant for Arabia. That means he was universal. Now, I cannot hold here to say that uh, this has been replicated from the Holy Prophet because he was the brother, he was the teacher, uh, he was the mentor of Imam Ali. So you will find similar things in the Holy Prophet as well. The Holy Prophet was universal. Today when uh, we approach the Shahada also uh, of uh, our Holy Prophet or better during his Wilada, these are the things to tell the world that he has not come for us only. He has come for the whole universe. So George here is putting it from the word born, that he was born in Arabia, yes, but he was not meant for Arabia. And then he goes on to say that although his kindness and favors sprang from Islam, that means he was taught about kindness, about favors from Islam, but he was not confined to Muslims. So again here, that whatever he got from Islam was not confined to Islam or not to be given only to Muslims, but to even other than Muslims, so to the whole universe. And so many examples are there in his life, uh, whether it was kindness, favors, and other good qualities that Imam had. Then he says that if he had been for Muslims, now he's challenging, he's going a little opposite, so that he puts now his position, George, he's putting his own position, that if he had been for Muslims only, indirectly he's saying, that only a Christian would not have been prompted involuntarily to analyze the events of his life. So he's telling himself and he's telling us that if he was confined to Muslims, so a Christian like him would not have woken up involuntarily without any influence, just woke up and get prompted to analyze the events of the life of Ali bin Abi Talib. So he is, in a nutshell, he is trying to explain in giving an introduction to Imam Ali, and then of course he writes the whole book worth, uh, please, reading once at least in lifetime. And then of course he goes on to say, and that is why we find poetry for him, and we find in his life judgments that were made uh, in the life of Imam Ali, of course, we find the feats of Valar, today we will touch about that in the, the next uh, second bit, inshallah, and the interesting incidents of his life. So summing up, he is saying that Imam was matchless, no one could match him, not only on the battlefield. Many times, uh, many of us, many of our brothers and others as well, like to portray him on the battlefield. Yes, why not? He was brave, uh, he was gallant, he was uh, well-trained, and he had the quality to fight. But then he says, no, don't only leave him there. He was not only matchless on the battlefield, but he was also matchless in faith. Today's topic, Iman, it's a big, big blessing. So no one could match him in his Iman. Piety, the taqwa that he had, the purity, the eloquence, how he spoke, how he taught, how he expressed himself and 
uh, taught us so many things like I have been quoting the Nahjul Balagha in the past two, three days. So the eloquence can be noted there, how eloquent uh, he was, no match to, to his eloquence. And the help for the deprived and the oppressed, he was matchless. George says, no match against Ali when it comes to help the deprived and the oppressed. And finally, uh, the support for the truth. So we get a good gist here of the Imam, of all these qualities being matchless, and you take one by one, it will take you very, very long time, uh, but you will understand him better. Here, I really appreciate that uh, the preface is a very good start to, to reading this book. But this is only one book uh, towards Imam, and then, of course, there are so many other books written by the ulama, by uh, Muslim scholars and uh, other scholars as well. I am glad to say that uh, there is one quality which is being repeated every Friday from different pulpits throughout the world in Khutbah Jumah. And uh, when I get time, if I am in time, then uh, I can hear it. Otherwise, I hear the recording, just to remind myself. And uh, the, the khatib throughout the world, uh, you will hear them giving the, the, the salawat of uh, uh, different personalities in uh, Islam. So when it reaches the name of Imam Ali, they will say what we say. So they will repeat all the khatib that we repeat, that we say. So they will say, Asadullahu al-Ghalib, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Salawatullahi wa salamu wa alayhi. Allahu salli ala. So this is a worldwide, a universal acknowledgement that he was the lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Ghalib, the one who can attack and can uh, actually invade the special quality of one of the species of the lions, a fierce lion. And it comes from the, the Khatib al Jumma. Every Jumma, I, I can say very confidently, go on uh, YouTube and you will hear different Makhatib. When they, it comes to the name of Imam Ali, they will say, Lion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what more do, do we want? I mean, uh, he has been put as a fierce lion for us, for Islam. Insha'Allah. Uh, coming to the second bit of uh, today's uh, presentation is the Battle of Badr. Now, the Battle of Badr, again I will uh, take it in short. It was my interest in the past to go on the PowerPoint and explain the battles with uh, pictures. And, uh, and then we went battle by battle. But uh, the Battle of Badr was the first battle in Islam. And uh, for the first time, the followers of the new faith, okay, so for the first time, the, uh, the followers of the new faith were put into a serious test. They're coming on the battlefield for the first time. It's a new test. You can imagine if we were one of them. I mean, it is for the first time that we had to face an enemy how we are going to do it, what is going to happen, what is it about fighting, why are we fighting, and so on and so forth. So first battle, it's a serious test for the Muslims. So what happens here is, uh, before I just touch about the battle, which is again one just in a sentence, because uh, uh, we know there was victory. However, there is a dua which the Holy Prophet has been quoted to have made before the battle. And the night preceding, this very tense, I mean, if we are going to fight tomorrow morning, how would we uh, behave at night? Um, me personally, I would not go to sleep because of uh, being anxious and being nervous. But there it is, uh, the soldiers are said to have uh, slept very uh, nicely, sound sleep. However, I would like to, to, to repeat what the Holy Prophet uh, said. He made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it was the first challenge. 
amazing dua and it really moved me because he is telling Allah, he is addressing Allah. So we actually let us learn from this dua of dua as to how to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes we feel that it is just like uh, one, two, three or X, Y, Z. But look at how friendly and how daringly and how openly he puts it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the words uh, I'm quoting now. He is telling, Ya Allah, the Quraysh are here. Now, it is just like, uh, and, and it's, it's a good way, I would say, because he is uh, not coming, he is not pulling himself back, uh, no fear, and he's telling Allah openly. He says, the Quraysh are here, and they are here to fight us. Oh Allah, humiliate them tomorrow. Very simple dua. He says, humiliate them tomorrow, because if the Muslims bend, perish today. He's telling Allah, if the Muslims perish, if they are all killed, for example, or they are all gone, you shall have no worshippers. You shall not be worshipped. Because these Quraysh have come here, they are idol worshippers, they, they don't know Islam. They have other than you, Allah. So if the Muslims, whom I have come with, or I am uh, leading, if they perish, then you have no worshippers. Subhanallah. And لَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّهُ So we're going to rescue you. We are going to give you victory. I'm just uh, putting this verse as an indirect answer from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are going to put you into victory, although you are going to be few. 313 is the figure. Unique figure. We like it, we use it, and uh, we long to be one of them. If not one of them, the followers of 313, if not the followers of 313, on and on in the group somewhere. So the 313 is going to uh, re-emerge, inshallah. So, there comes the 950 uh, Quraysh against 313 uh, Muslims led by the Holy Prophet. So normally the trend was, and I uh, want to put it here as well, the trend was the three groups uh, fight together. So there is uh, the Holy Prophet himself okay, in front and then there is the Banu Hashim just besides him led by none other than Asadullah al ghalib that's the second group and then the third group uh, the companions so we have a mixture of soldiers but look here the Banu Hashim are commanded to go in front just like Karbala the trend is the same the peace process is the same if you study the battles you will find similarities of such kinds the Banu Hashim are right there uh, guiding or uh, guarding the Holy Prophet and the companions are following them and the companions hearts are filled with faith and readiness to fight. I have repeated the word, word faith here. It's a blessing. You have faith, you are ready to fight. So this is one of the types of faith. There's so many types and the strength uh, we must all ask for from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should also have this in us to be able to fight so many things, to fight ourselves, to fight the enemy, and uh, other uh, challenges of life. Now, going back to Imam Ali here, he was, uh, at that time, it was not called talk of the town. When you become a, mm, a bit popular, there's some event, then you become a talk of the caravan. Because that was a small caravan, that time there's no town, and then it, you all go around and speak about someone. Uh, here, the talk of the caravan became Imam Ali, the way he fought Badr. So, we have these three groups, and as usual, uh, the clan of uh, the Holy Prophet was in the front line. Now, we have three brave soldiers from the opponents. We have Utbah, Walid, and Shaiba. And they boastingly says, now you bring our match. We are three, now you bring our match. You bring three people who are like us. 
uh, as if that those are the ones whom we can fight and we deserve to fight. So, okay, fine. Uh, Imam Ali is appointed. One of them, Hazrat Hamza, uh, is appointed, and Ubaid, Ubaidah. Three of them, very brave, and they are the ones who counter Utba, Walid, and Shaiba, and they fight very bravely and kill them. So, that is the start of victory. I've shortened it because there is so much an exchange here in between that uh, uh, doesn't need to be discussed at this point. But uh, there it is, the victory has been promised and there uh, comes the first victory of the first battle of Islam. And conclusively, just at the end, uh, Imam Ali has this to say. This was his message, but then I will also say a few of his sayings uh, to conclude. He is telling them now, the ones who are remaining, this was, of course, obviously we know it was a battle of defending Islam and keeping it in good strength. So he tells them, you shall not dispute with us regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after today. Okay, so take back the message. It's not that only sword fighting and killing. And no, the message has to go across. Why we are here? We have fought in the name and in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after today, you shall not dispute regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should be the end. But then Imam has a few things to tell us. In his sayings, I'm just repeating. The first thing he says, verily, I have never fled from a battlefield. This is a, a message for us. He says, I have never ran away from a battlefield. The second one he says, it's not the second one, I'm just putting it to uh, give some messages for today as well. I was the first to embrace Islam. And the last one for today, I was the first to pray with uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi wa Sallam A few minutes uh, to finish and I will finish with uh, my promise that Layal al-Qadr are uh, the nights, the auspicious nights starting from tomorrow they have been named as the heart of Mahi Ramadan and uh, additionally they are just like Friday is to the week. So in the week we have the best day is the Friday. And among the all the months, the best month is uh, the heart of the all, all months is Mahi Ramadan. Similarly, then the Qadr is the heart of Mahi Ramadan and the heart of all nights throughout the year. And that is why it, it is uncomparable. Although... Uh, Al Fishahar is being said as the Mizan of a thousand uh, uh, nights or a thousand years of nights uh, with uh, Layal Qadr. But that is where Qadr stands. It is so high and so auspicious. So we know and we will be told that uh, on the 19th we have the decree. Many times we have something written and then proofreading is done and then finally it is being stamped or uh, endorse. So similarly, we start with tomorrow as uh, a preparation of the decree of the destiny and then on the 21st it is being proofread and finally on the 23rd night it is being endorsed uh, by of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will just read out a few things that we can pick up whichever we can in a small way to uh, make our Layal al-Qadr successful. The first one, of course, is we have to prepare ourselves spiritually, I know, of course, but before spiritually, we have to agree. Physically, we have to have enough rest and uh, a reasonable amount of food uh, to keep us awake, to keep us healthy, and that is one of the preparations. It doesn't, uh, there is no dispute about that. We can't uh, come while we are asleep or we are, we are hungry. So these things have been put in perspective that prepare yourself just normally and moderately. Of course, ghusl has been highly recommended. That is one uh, uh, good step towards getting into Layal al-Qadr. And the barakah of the night, 
the blessings of the night are so much that we must make the use of Quran because when we are reading the Quran we are actually talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we just got an example from the Holy Prophet how, how we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day before Badr we can do the same when we are reading the Quran we can put our pledges very politely and very nicely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very openly uh, although secretly but uh, these are the days and these are the nights we can uh, talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the triple R are the recite reflect and review the Holy Quran it, these are the, the keys for success and benefits uh, deriving benefits from Quran and then we have the duas we have so much to uh, recite and uh, doesn't matter whether we recite a verse or the whole dua but it should be with the uh, connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a highly recommended thing that uh, you do not have to be lengthy in your, you could be very short in your dua, but if you ponder and you try to act upon it and get connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so much the better. We have the two rakah namaz which will be explained, followed by istighfar, and many uh, of uh, my younger brothers or friends and whenever we discuss why 70, why 100, maybe very much in short, 70 times uh, istighfar is as if remembering or reminding yourself of the 70 sins and telling Allah, oh, this one also, please remove this one from me. Yesterday we said Allah is so merciful, He's hiding so much of our sins as if He has forgiven us. The a call from uh, Imam Ali. So here it is. The istighfar and the sins, of course, I have more than 70, so I'll use the 100 one for that. But these are the falsafa. Uh, in these nights, we are asked to seek and acquire knowledge. And this will also be expounded. Of course, it is very, very highly recommended that get some, something out of these nights. Improve, increase your knowledge in this night. Wilaya, again, it will be explained in, in depth, but it is pointing towards, ultimately, towards our 12th. When we, 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 we raise for our Qur'an Amal, we, we mention all our Imma uh, al-Tahirin. But uh, the focus is at our 12th Imam, our living Imam. And that will also, inshallah, be addressed. It is highly recommended that charity and sadaqah precedes these nights, or during the nights, if we can, or even after that, as a a contribution towards the night uh, very very highly recommended and it's a night of love so when we have that in ourselves we connect better with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lastly the meaning of Qadr is destiny so we are told that try to change your destiny if you uh, for example God forbid were destiny you know, putting your own destination is somewhere where it's not good or it's not favorable uh, or it's not liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this is the night to pledge that I would like to change my destiny so I would like to start so and so and probably a, a good amal or a good project or a way out of wherever I was and things like this so this is the the night to to plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but to promise yourself as well that I would like to change my destiny because I think I was going on the wrong direction. I am full of sins. I've so and so. And you, you will put your thought process in place, inshallah. Let us pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having given us the tawfiq, the opportunity to enter into this very, very auspicious and special nights of uh, Qadr. So he should also forgive our sins and accept our amals and listen to our duas and accept our duas as well. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all our brethren around the world, especially India at this moment, as it is undergoing uh, the affliction and the turmoil of the disease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all his power and blessings remove and decrease this bala for uh, the Indians especially, but to the world at large. Those who are in hunger, those who are in war, 
those who are in any other economic or any other problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them ease, insha'Allah. And we must not forget to end up uh, all our marhumin, uh, especially in the nights to come, we shall remember them again, that uh, Allah grant them maghfira and they grant them the best place in Jannah, insha'Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. دعاء افتتاح الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا علي يا عظيم يا غفور يا رحيم أنت الرب العظيم الذي ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير وهذا شهر عظمته وكرمته وشرفته وفضلته على الشهور وهو الشهر الذي فرضت صيامه عليه وهو شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان وجعلت فيه ليلة القدر وجعلتها خيرا من ألف شهر فيا ذا المن ولا يمن عليك من علي بفكاك رقبتي من النار فيما تمنه علي وأدخلني الجنة برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد اللهم رب شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن وافترثت على عبادك فيه الصيام صل على محمد وآل محمد وارزقني حج بيتك الحرام في عامي هذا وفي كل عام واغفر لي تلك الذنوب العظام فإنه لا يغفرها غيرك يا رحمن يا علام بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أفتتح الثناء بحمدك وأنت مسدد للسواب بمنك وأيكنت أنك أنت أرحم الراحمين في موضع العفو والرحمة وأشد المعاقبين في موضع النكال والنقمة وعظم المتجبرين في موضع القبرياء والعظمة اللهم أزنت لي في دعائك ومسعلتك فاسمع يا سميع مدحتي واجب يا رحيم دعوتي واقل يا غفور عثرتي فكم يا إلهي من قربة قد فرجتها وهموم قد قشفتها وأثرة قد أقلتها ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلكة بلاء قد فككتها الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الظل وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر الحمد لله بجميع مهامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله لا مضاد له في ملكه ولا منازع له في عمره الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عظمته 
الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق أمره وحمده الظاهر بالكرم مجده الباسط بالجود يداه الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده كسرة العطاء إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز الوهاب اللهم إني أسألك كديلا من كثير ما حاجتي لبي إليه عظيما وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير اللهم إنا أفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيعتي وسفحك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيه عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عند ما كان من خطعي وعمدي أتمعني في أن أسألك في في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وعريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من عجابتك فسرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستعنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبطى عني عتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبطى عني هو خير لي لعلمك بعاقبة العمور فلم أر مولا كريما أسبر على عبد اللئيم منك عليه يا ربي إنك تدعوني فول لي أنك وتتحبب إلي واعتبغض إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك فكأن لي التطول عليك فلم يمنعك ذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إلي وتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد عليه بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك مجر الفلك مسخر الرياح فالك الإسباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته والحمد لله على طول عناته في غضبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الإسباء ذي الجلال والإكرام والفضل والإنعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادله ولا شبيه يشاكله ولا ظهير يعاضده قهر بعزته العزاء وتواضى لعظمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين عنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وعنا عاصي ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازي فكم من موهبة حنيئة قد أعطاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبحجة مونقة قد عراني فأثني عليه هامدا واذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يحتك هجابه ولا يغلك بابه ولا يرد السائله ولا يخيب آمله الحمد لله الذي يعمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستكبرين ويحلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين والحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الحاربين نكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضي حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين 
الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبه في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وعمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضلا وأحسنا وأجملا وأكمل وأزكى وأنما وأتيبا وأطهرا وأفنا وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحمت حنمت وسلمت على أهد من عبادك وعنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وهجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبع العظيم وصل على صديقة الطاهرة فاتمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على صبتي الرحمة وإمام الحدى الحسن والحسين سيدي شباب أحل الجنة وصل على إمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الحاد المحدي حججك على عبادك وأمنائك في بلادك صلاة كثيرة دائمة اللهم وصل على علي اللهم صل على ولي عمرك القائم المعمال وعلى العدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين وعيده بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم صل اللهم اجعل حداي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلفه في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبله مقله دينه الذي ارتزيته لا أبدله من بعد خوفه أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيئا اللهم عزه وعزز به وانصره وانتصر به وانصره نسرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يصيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا اللهم أظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحد من الخلق اللهم إنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهلا وتظل بها النفاك وأهلا وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملنا وما قصرنا عنه فبلغنا اللهم المن به شعفنا واشعب به صدعنا وارتك به فتقنا 
وكثر به قلتنا وعزز به ذلتنا واغن به عائلنا واغذ به عن مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عسرنا وبيض به وجوهنا وفك به عصرنا وأنجح به طلبتنا وأنجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا وأعطنا به سعلنا وبلغنا به من الدنيا والآخرة آمالنا وعاتنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسعولين وعوسع المعطين اشف به صدورنا وأذهب به غيظ قلوبنا واهدنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي ما تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم وانصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إلى الحق آمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا سلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وقصرة عذونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا فصل على محمد وآل محمد وعنا على ذلك بفتح منك تحجله وبذر تكشفه ونسر تؤزه وسلطان حق تظهره ورحمة منك تجللناها وآفية منك تلبسناها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم برحمتك في الصالحين فأدخلنا وفي عليين فارفعنا وبكأس من معين من عين سلسبيل فاسقنا ومن الحور العين برحمتك فزوجنا ومن الولدان المخلدين كأنهم لؤلؤ مكنون فأخدمنا ومن ثمار الجنة والحوم الطير فاتعمنا ومن ثياب السندس والحرير والاستبرق فألبسنا وليلة القادر وحج بيتك الحرام وقتلا في سبيلك فوقفق لنا وصالح الدعاء والمسعة التي فاستجب لنا وإذا جمعت العولين والآخرين يوم القيامة فارحمنا وبرات من النار فاكتب لنا وفي جحنما فلا تغلنا وفي عذابك وحوانك فلا تبتلنا ومن الذقوم والضريع فلا تطعمنا ومع الشياطين فلا تجعلنا وفي النار على وجوهنا فلا تقببنا ومن ثياب النار وسرابي للقتران فلا تلبسنا ومن كل سوء يا لا إله إلا أنت بحق لا إله إلا أنت فنجنا اللهم صل على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم إني أسألك أن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر من الأمر المحتوم في الأمر الحكيم من القضاء الذي لا يرد ولا يبدل أن تكتبني من حجاج بيتك الحرام المبرور حجهم المشكور سعيهم المغفور ذنوبهم المكفر يا سيئاتهم وأن تجعل فيما تقضي وتقدر أن تطيل عمري في خير وآفيا وتوسي في رزقي وتجعلني مما تنتصر به لدينك ولا تستبدل به غيري 
أعوذ بجلال وجهك الكريم أن يقضي عني شهر رمضان أو يتلو الفجر من ليلة هذه ولق قبلي تبية أو ذنب تؤذبني عليه اللهم صل على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد يا ذا الذي كان قبل كل شيء ثم خلق كل شيء ثم يبقى ويفنى كل شيء يا ذا الذي ليس كمثله شيء ويا ذا الذي ليس في السماوات العلا ولا في الأرزين السفلى ولا فوقهن ولا تحتهن ولا بينهن إله يعبد غيره لك الحمد حمدا لا يقوى على إحصائها إلا أنت فصل على محمد وآل محمد صلاة لا يقوى على إحصائها إلا أنت اللهم صل على محمد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد إلهي وقف السائلون ببابك ولا ذا الفقراء بجنابك ووقفت سفينة المساكين على صاحل بحر جودك وكرمك يرجون الجواز إلى صاحة رحمتك ونعمتك إلهي إن كنت لا ترحم في هذا الشهر الشريف إلا لمن أخلص لك في صيامه وقيامه فمن للمذنب المقصر إذا غرك في بحر ذنوبه وآثامه إلهي إن كنت لا ترحم إلا المطيعين فمن للعاصين وإن كنت لا تقبل إلا من العاملين فمن للمكسرين إلهي ربيح الصائمون وفاز القائمون ونجى المخلصون ونحن عبيدك المذنبون فارحمنا برحمتك واعطخنا من النار بأفوك يا كريم يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم أدخل على أهل القبور السرور اللهم أغن كل فقير اللهم أشبع كل جائع اللهم أكس كل عريان اللهم قذ دين كل مدين اللهم فرج عن كل مكروب اللهم رد كل غريب اللهم فك كل أسير اللهم أسلح كل فاسد من أمور المسلمين اللهم اشف كل مريض اللهم سد فقرنا بغناك اللهم غير سوء أهالنا بحسن حالك اللهم قضع الندين واغننا من الفقر إنك على كل شيء قدير سورة المباركة الفاتحة الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم إلهي عظم البلاء وبرح الخفاء وانكشف الغطاء وانقطع الرجاء وضاقت الأرض ومنعت السماء وأنت المستعان وإليك المشتكى وعليك المعول في شدة والرخاء اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد أولي الأمر الذين فرضت علينا طاعة وعرفتنا بذلك منزلتهم 
ففرج عنا بحق فرجا عاجلا قريبا كلمح البصر هو أقرب يا محمد يا علي يا علي يا محمد اكفياني فإنك ما كافيان وانصراني فإنك ما ناصران يا مولان يا صاحب الزمان الغوث 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 أدركنا 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 الساعة 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 العجال العجال العجل يا أرحم الراحمين بحق محمد وآله الطاهرين السلام عليك يا رسول الله السلام عليك يا أمير المؤمنين السلام عليك يا فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين السلام عليك يا حسن المجتبى السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليك يا مولانا عبد الفضل العباس ابن عمير المؤمنين السلام عليكم كل شهداء كربلاء جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولا وابن مولا السلام عليك يا غريب الغرباء السلطان ابو الحسن علي بن موسى الرضا ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليك يا مولانا يا صاحب الاسر والزمان السلام عليك يا خليفة الرحمن السلام عليك يا شريك القرآن السلام عليك يا كعبة الإيمان السلام عليك يا إمامنا وإمام الإنس والجان أجر الله فرجك وسهر الله مخرجك وظهورك ورحمة الله وبركاته